Do you remember the survival horror genre? Well you should because for a short period of time this is one of the most popular genres in gaming. This genre of gaming came to its own with the release of Resident Evil in Night 6 and peaked in 2000 with Silent Hill. Survivor Horror is a subgenre of the action adventure one. The characteristics of Survivor Horror is you're a dude or dudette, you're powerless, you have limited means of fighting back, and you have no idea what's going on or what's going to happen, and more importantly, prepare to be scared! Boo! <laughs> Welcome to this week's episode of Michael's Retro Game Reviews. Now, for this week's episode, I thought I'd go into the catacombs of gaming and, and review what most people consider to be the forefather of survival horror, Alone in the Dark. Where do lights go? Alone in the Dark is inspired by the writings of H.P. Lovecraft. You can tell this by the tone and atmosphere of this game, which focuses more on suspense and the fear of what might happen, as compared to Resident Evil, which does take many cues from Alone in the Dark, but comes off more like a cheesy B-horror movie. I think it's a shame that Resident Evil has lost its aspect to it, but Alone in the Dark has a more classic horror feel to it, and doesn't rely on cheap scares to well scare you. Alone in the Dark was not the mother of the survival horror genre, but was the forefather, and perfected a lot of the elements of this type of game. 2D backgrounds, check. 3D characters placed on top of them, check. Most of the things you love at playing an old school Resident Evil game were done here first and nearly perfected. Due to the time and limitations in technology, this game does have flaws. But so does Resident Evil, and that game came out four years later on more superior hardware. That comparison puts you in the right mindset for evaluating an early pioneering game of its subgenre. I want to be clear with you nearly every single flaw is due to the fact this was an early pioneering game of its subgenre and the technology available at the time this game came out, and these flaws should not go against this game, but in order to do a thorough review I've got to at least go over them. First the controls, think Resident Evil but without the controller, instead keyboard. I'll be honest, when I first played this game again for this review and future retrospective on the Alone and Dark series, I found them stiff and unresponsive. So you can't rely on light and fast reflexes to save you, but in a way this forces you to be extremely careful in the way you progress in this game and in your encounters with the enemies meaning there is some tactic in how you go about this game but later on that but after a while I did get used to the controls one of the things that helps this game being played on the keyboard is it keeps the control scheme simple arrow keys move your dude around and quickly double tapping forward makes you run good luck pulling it off at will enter brings up your inventory and actions menu if you want to use an item or set your character's action, it's done here. To make your character search, fight or push things, you've got to set the mode your character is in. I give credit to Resident Evil in simplifying all this with the action button. Now if you set your character to fight, you press the spacebar and the forward key to attack. And I can't complain about that, the attack in here is as well done as it is in Resident Evil. And escape brings up the options menu, from here you can save, load or quit your game. If it wasn't for the ability to save whenever you wanted, this game would be impossible to finish. So my advice, save once in every room you're in, or at minimum, before something major happens. Now for the 3D graphics, yes they're bad, but if you're a retro gamer part of the course, this won't matter to you, but for the more casual retro gamer, this will matter. And that's a huge shame, but at least the 2D backdrops look good, but more on them later. People may complain about having so few item inventory slots in Resident Evil, but at least in Resident Evil you know how many items you can carry at any given time. In Lone of Dark you have no way to gauge how many items your character can hold. The best way to explain it is every item has a certain amount of weight to it, and your character can only hold so much weight at any given time. Sounds pretty simple right? Except you don't know what each item weighs, and that makes item management impossible. The only thing you can do when an item has no more use, get rid of it. And when you have a bunch of items with the same use, get rid of most of them. And when you finish reading a book, get rid of it. And for the pot of stew and a gramophone? Well, grab them and take them to where they're needed right away. And don't run for any length of time with them. This will make item management harder because they weigh a ton. You can tell Resident Evil saw this problem and refined this aspect by only having so many item slots and chests to store your unwanted items. So, apart from the controls, 3D aspect, item management and having to save lots, this is a pretty good game that really does hold up. 
I think any old school Resident Evil fan will appreciate this pre-Resident Evil survivor horror, but what are the good things about this game will they like? Despite this game's flaws, it's still a very scary game. Honestly, I was totally on the edge of the couch when playing this. What I think makes a game scary is the music, or at times, lack of it. And sometimes nothing can be more scary than something. What I mean is, what music there is, is good, but it's very random when it plays. You would think it's to coincide with something bad that's about to happen. And when something bad doesn't happen, it puts you constantly on edge. Because that false sense of security in relying on the music to prepare you for what's about to happen isn't there. Back to the graphics. And while the 3D models haven't aged well, they still have that retro charm to them. But the 2D backgrounds still to this day look amazing. They show great attention to detail and are varied and generally interesting to look at. Something really cool about the graphics is when you die, a monster drags your lifeless body and places your corpse on an altar. I have to say this bit looks amazing and if you had some Mega Driver playing in the background, this would be one badass retro game and metal rock and music moment. Yes, the 2D backgrounds do look simple and don't have many on-screen colours available to them, but they still look good and only just out beaten by Resident Evil's and that game came out four years later. Back to what I was saying earlier about having to be tactical. Because you can't rely on quick reflexes to defeat monsters, you're going to have to be smart on how you approach them, or not. Now when I say not, I mean you can avoid a lot of them. Right at the beginning, a monster jumps out of one of the attic windows. So you have two choices, fight it, or be smart and push the cupboard right in front of the window to avoid a fight. And throughout this game you'll get many chances to avoid fights. There are not many enemies in this game, I'm guessing in total there's about 30 or so, and at least 10 could be avoided. But when you can't avoid them, and are forced into a confrontation, be smart. Is this an enemy you can easily defeat with your hands? Or if it's too much, use your shotgun or revolver. But save your ammo wherever possible because you don't know what bigger bad guys are around the corner. So, when dealing with enemies, keep your distance, judge the situation, and attack them in the best way to avoid taking damage yourself. Because you won't get many items to replenish your health. I would say with a bit of common sense, about half the puzzles can easily be completed. But the other half, what the? How was I supposed to figure them out? So you're gonna need a guide when playing this game. I think nowadays guides make games more fun. So if you have a smartphone or a tablet, pull up a guide and have it on standby in case you need it. And for the other titles in the Alone in Dark series, well that's a future retrospective for another time. So, my final thoughts. We've gone over all the bad points, and we've gone over the good points. And overall, I really like this game. Sure, the control sets are getting used to, and the graphics haven't aged well. But what matters the most is gameplay, and damn it, they still hold up. Even if you can't enjoy this game, you still have to recognise the importance of this game. Without Alone in the Dark, we wouldn't have had Resident Evil, and without Resident Evil, we wouldn't have had Silent Hill, or the many survival horror games to follow after. So I give Alone in the Dark the thumb of approval. I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.